Hello everyone, this is Ashwant. I'm back with another video after a long gap. In this video, I'm going to explain about the importance of system design in product development. With an example of Uber system design, it can also be related to Ola. Uh, these two are very much popular uh, cab services all over the world, right? It makes the ease of transportation nowadays. So, before going to explain the architecture of Uber, I want to uh, explain something about system design. What actually system design is? System design is like understanding the bigger picture of a product. When you are going to build a particular product, when you involve in building a particular product, if you are to explain or if you want to understand the bigger picture of the product, it is what the system design is. So, uh, let me take an example of Uber system design. So, how system design can be manipulated in such a way that your product can be successful. So, you all know how successful Uber is. It is only because of the system design of the Uber. Even when you want to crack any product based companies, interviews, so system design knowledge is very much important because if you are capable enough to design any system in an efficient way, then you are you are suitable for developing high level products and this enables you to make uh, to make feel good to develop in, to sustain in any organization, any organization level product development. So in this video, I will explain how uh, system design of Uber uh, is architectured in such a way that Uber is gaining much much profits. So this is the system design of Uber. Initially, Uber follows monolithic architecture, but nowadays it, tra it is transitioned into microservice architecture. A uh, microservice is nothing but dividing the entire project into different modules and working on that. If you want to know more about microservices, watch my previous video. You can get more detailed explanation. So, see, uh, this is the system design of Uber. So, um, initially, consider cab and user. Cab is the one uh, which user books. So there is supply here and with the user end there is a demand here. So the reason is that if the user books a cab, a particular cab, a nearest cab is allocated to you, that is here, that is what we consider it as supply. And for the for the cab perspective, cab driver's perspective, the user who books first uh, in the nearby location will be allocated to the particular cab driver. That is the demand here. So these two are the end users which we know. So after that, there is a firewall which connects uh, cab and the user to the main part of the application. The firewall is nothing here, it just protects the cab and the user interfaces to be accessible only by the components of the Uber architecture, not anyone. And when you consider here, um, uh, let's just leave about it, it is a front end part, just leave about that. And here at the back end, there is a term called Disco. Disco is nothing but it is a dispatch optimizer. So what it does is, so how can we get the real time locations of user and cab instantly? Because as we, as we all know, yet is a spear, not a flat surface, right? So on that spear, uh, what Disco does is, it divides the yet into, yet attitude into longitude and la la latitude oriented regions. So what happens here is, so for every one or two kilometers can be considered as a particular region. So by using satellite navigations, Disco makes tune of where the user is by dividing the cells. So for every region, there must be some 50 or 100 cells. Consider just it is like an example. So consider there are uh, some some part of cells in allocated to particular region. So if the user books a particular cab, automatically the cell information of the particular user will be transferred here. See, there is an interface here supply and demand the both the cab driver's location the user division user uh, user's location can be collected using this disco part so this is an important thing because it is responsible for calculating the estimated time of arrival calculating the price everything so disco plays an important role in uber architecture and then leave about this so there is a load balancer here which connects the front end and the back end here. So load balancer is again connected to some APIs. Kafka REST API, REST API and WebSockets node. So I will explain first what Kafka is. Kafka is a famous uh, framework uh, which is created by LinkedIn. So what it does is it collects the live feed, live data feed and we can use it for, use it for analytics 
uh, or whatever the purposes we are so it is like collecting the live feed collecting the live feed from the user as well as the cab so that we can predict the price simply so kafka is a framework which collects uh, the, the data from the live feed so we are we are traveling on a live and we are structuring the traffic so that even the time duration is also collected by kafka because it is a live frame so we can do it for many things here so kafka is actually used to deal big data as uber and all of these are all um, containing huge amount of data so we need kafka here and again here the, here comes the microservices so we can use this data feed for for maintaining big data using hadoop here for fraud detection if anything happens like user denies to pay the bill or any fraud happens we can use it based on the live feed from the kafka and eta estimated time of arrival it is a important thing in respect to cabs so uh, when you want to book a cab the first thing you see is estimated time of arrival so the eta is 3 or 4 minutes you can choose that cab otherwise you will go for the nearest one right so uh, to 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 get the information of eta we need kafka data again and pricing and searching based on that live feed data collected by the kafka we can price our uh, ride as well as we can search the fees like if the traffic is more or it is night time we can also include search fee search tax like that on later we can use kafka for analytics like we to give to give coupons and vouchers to the user we need some data like if the person if the rider is um, booking a particular uh, booking uber service regularly we can give some offers there so and we can predict to improve our business also so this is how it use uh, when coming to analytics and we have backup center to maintain all the data as a backup so so that we can restore the data whenever we need if there is any loss occurred so again this disco is being connected with the backup center because if any geographical data is missing you can ultimately get to the backup center within seconds that is the speciality here because we are using microservices i already mentioned because the dependency is very low when compared to monolithic architecture so again the database perspective in this um, it generally uses rdbms because a relational database management system is a traditional one and it is a structured one but now nowadays it is moving towards a big data kind of thing because uh, we because uber needs scalability so ultimately every product nowadays needs scalability so it is moving towards big data so again after all these whole scenario again we can use kafka to collect all the log services from the architecture to do some analytics and to do some predictions to make business apart from booking and riding like uber is also uber is now also in uber eat services food services payment services we can use all those data uh, to 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 do such kind of applications from the kafka so if we have the data of all the users who are using cabs we can make use of the data and we can do some predictions over there and finally we can use the data to gain much profits into wherever we go like uber capitalizes that uh, by entering into food services also and it is gaining um, huge success over over there also because uber eats is gaining success only because of the data can you believe it or not because zomato and swiggy are all the already settled over there but uber eats is also gaining popularity within few months because uber contains data data is very much important and kafka is used to collect those live feed so this is the overall high level architecture of uber so without understanding this if you are directly um, like if you want to directly execute the particular product if you want to directly implement the particular product by using only coding it is meaningless so system design is very much important uh, whether it may be uber or ola anything so this is how it works and when you coming to programming language implementation uh, so to deploy uh, for deployment purpose uber is using jenkins which is a continuous integration tool and for provisioning we are using docker here to containerize the entire app wherever uh, it needs to be employed and for backend uh, it it uses python it will be supported by um, every platform because python is platform independent and node.js because um, everything here is like a modularization so microservices mostly focuses on uh, dividing the entire product into multiple nodes so in this scenario we need some scalability we need now um, we we don't need interdependencies here because every module is independent of its work so node.js is the best suit for that and when coming to databases initially it uses postgres after that it transform transition into mysql nowadays 
it is using Cassandra to uh, live stream the big data and for logging it uses Kafka clusters because we already discussed how important Kafka is when coming to Uber. So Kafka Kafka is like it completely manages it completely uh, rules the Uber when I say it is because entire thing uh, Uber is getting the profits only because of the Kafka because without Kafka without data analysis it is difficult for Uber to enter into the profit zone so this is how Uber architecture works so thank you for watching this video I will be coming with much more videos later on thank you